welcome to beachcation.com. My name is Colin Mahler and I will be taking you through some of the basics of chain making today. We are gonna be starting by learning how a jump ring is made and then we're going to learn how to open and close them properly and then how to link them together into some very simple chains. Uh, the first chain we're gonna learn how to make is a two in one chain. Uh, then we're going to move on to the two and two chain and the three and three chain and all of these numbers just indicate that on the two and one chain there's two jump rings linked to one, linked to two, linked to one. Same goes for the two and two, there's two jump rings linked to two other jump rings and so on and the same for the three and three. And once we get through those then we're going to do something a little more complicated and we're going to learn how to make these jump ring flowers and some different ways to connect them together. So jump rings are made from a coil of wire and I've wound a coil here on this plastic mandrel. And a mandrel is basically anything that is uniformly cylindrical. And this mandrel happens to be about 4.5 millimeters in diameter. And I can use my millimeter gauge to get the size. So now we're taking a closer look here at the millimeter gauge and the millimeters are this bottom measurement here. Inches are measured up on the top. And looking a little bit closer, this is actually closer to a five millimeter mandrel, even though it's a little bit shy of five millimeters. We'll count it as five. So now here we have our coil again wound on our almost five millimeter mandrel. And again, a mandrel can be, I'm here I'm using a plastic one. You can use knitting needles or steel drill rods or anything you can find handy. Again, that's um, uniformly cylindrical. Now, notice the coil that I made here. The, the coils are wound pretty tight together and you wanna make sure if you're cutting your own jump rings that you do wind your coils nice and tight so you don't have uh, end up with different size jump rings because of gaps in your coil. And you can cut apart your coil in different ways. So once you cut straight down the center of this coil, you will, each, um, you will end up with a little pile of jump rings. And you can cut these either with a pair of flush cutters, a jeweler saw, or if you're gonna get really fancy, you can invest in a jump ring cutter. And if you're interested in learning more about making your own jump rings, you can take our, one of our classes here on beeducation.com, Making Your Own Jump Rings by Lisa Claxton. She goes much into much more depth than I am right here. So these are the three chains that we're gonna be starting with. And again, they're very simple chains. Uh, the top one here is a two in one, and again, it's two jump rings attached to one, attached to two, and so on. Then we're gonna move on to our two and two, and our three and three chain. And again, we're gonna start with this one, which is our two in one. And you can see as I move it around here, the pattern of it with the two rings attached to the single ring in between. So I am going to be using two pairs of pliers to open and close and uh, put together, open and close my jump rings and put together my chain. Um, I'm right-handed, so I'm going to be using a pair of chain nose pliers in my right hand and a pair of bent chain nose pliers in my left hand. And you wanna make sure that the tips of your bent chain nose pliers are pointed towards the outside of the hand that is holding them, as opposed to like this, because this way your tips will just end up getting more in your way. This way, they're bent nicely out of the way. And you also, when you're holding your tools, wanna to make sure that you keep your thumbs up on the tops of your tools as opposed to down here, because then your thumbs are gonna be bashing into each other and you have a little bit more control um, over your tools if you have your, your thumbs up on the tops here like this. And we're gonna start by opening and closing some jump rings. Before you can start putting a chain together, you need to have some rings prepped and ready to go. When you first, if you're buying your jump rings or you're making your jump rings, <clears throat> they're going to come not quite open and not quite, quite closed. So you're gonna have to either open them up further or close them all the way before you can start constructing your chain. So we're gonna start by learning how to properly open a jump ring. And I'm going to Take my jump ring, I'm gonna brace it in my bent chain nose pliers, and the opening of my jump ring is up here at the 12 o'clock position. 
and I'm going to grab the other side of my jump ring with my chain nose pliers and I'm just going to give about a quarter of a twist away from me to open up that jump ring like so. And to close a jump ring, again, I'm going to brace my jump ring in my bent chain nose pliers with the opening at the 12 o'clock position. And I'm going to, again, grab the other side of my jump ring with my chain nose pliers. And when I'm opening and closing my jump rings, I want to make sure that I'm grabbing my jump ring with a lot of surface of my plier as opposed to just grabbing on with just the tip. If you try and open and close your jump rings with the tips of your pliers, you're going to warp your jump rings and they will not lay flat by the time you're done with them. So now what I want to do is I'm going to grab the other side of my jump ring and I'm going to rock both ends back past, past the point where they meet and back again. And what I'm trying to do here is I'm exerting a very slight inward pressure as I'm rocking the two ends back and forth and I'm trying to close the very small gap in between the two ends, which I have now done. And now I just want to make sure that the two ends lined up. So I'll give them a little wiggle until they do. And there's your closed jump ring. And it does take a little bit of practice to get your jump rings closed well. Um, the ultimate goal would be to not be able to see the seam of where your jump ring is closed, but that again, that does take a little bit of practice, so don't get frustrated if you have a hard time closing that gap. Okay, so now I have a little pile here of closed jump rings and a little pile of open jump rings, and so I'm ready to start putting a chain together. Now I am using a three millimeter 18 gauge jump ring. And again, the three millimeter diameter is taken off the inside of the jump ring as opposed to the outside. And that also would indicate the size of the mandrel that I use to wind my wire on. So we're gonna start here with a two in, or a, yeah, a two in one chain, which again is two jump rings attached to one, attached to two and so on. And I am going to eventually just continue adding on to this chain, but I'll show you how to quickly start it. So we're going to start with a single open jump ring, and I am going to take four of my closed jump rings, and I'm going to put this, them onto this single ring, and then I'm going to go ahead and close this jump ring up. and separate out two of the four rings that I've added. And it's a little hard to see, but I have a little tiny section here of a two-in-one chain. And I am going to go ahead and start attaching this to the end of my chain that I've already made. And to do that, I'm going to take a single open jump ring and I'm going to go through two of those jump rings on this little section of chain I just made. And I'm going to go ahead and attach it to the two jump rings on the end of the piece of chain I already have made. And I'm going to close this ring. Like so. And you can just continue on by adding, if you have two jump rings on the end of your chain like I do here, I'm going to take a single ring, link it through those two rings on the end of my chain. I'll take two closed rings and link it onto that single open ring. And again, close it up. Every open jump ring needs to be closed at some point. So if I forget to tell you to close a ring, you can just assume that you will have to close it. Here, so again, add a single open jump ring onto the two rings on the end of your chain. You and add two closed jump rings onto it. And go ahead and, cl oops, close that ring. Making sure that all your jump rings are still attached. 
And you'll notice here I am rather using the tips of my cha uh, chain nose pliers uh, because that's the only part of my tool that I can really get onto the surface of my jump ring. But I'm grabbing as much of my jump ring as I possibly can, again, in order to keep it flat and round. And there you go. Now you can make this, of course, as long as you want. You can make it into a bracelet or a little tiny section, maybe as a pair of earrings. And of course, you can just keep going and make it a nice long necklace. And you can add a clasp to the end of your chain with a single jump ring. If you can get two through the loop on your clasp, then I highly recommend putting two jump rings through your clasp just to make it a little more secure and stable. But when you're working with these nice small jump rings, you can actually get away with just using one. A smaller jump ring tends to be more secure than a larger one. So our next chain is a two and two chain. And as you can see, it's two rings linked together by two rings and so on. Uh, this is a slight variation from the chain I just showed you, the two and one. Of course, you are going to be connecting every pair of rings with another pair of rings. So instead of using a single open jump ring with two closed jump rings on it, well, you're gonna start with a single open jump ring with two closed jump rings. Once you close that ring, you're gonna add a second open ring right next to the first ring that was open. And you'll end up with a two and two chain. Now this chain I have made using a four millimeter inner diameter 18 gauge jump ring. And I can do a two and two chain with a three millimeter, the smaller jump rings, uh, but it's gonna start to get a little bit tight because those rings of course are smaller. So this is our next chain, the three and three chain, which is just taking our two and two chain one step further. This of course has, this chain has, <clears throat> this chain of course has three jump rings making each link. So you're just gonna add one extra jump ring to your two and two chain and you will have a three and three chain. Now this chain I made out of five millimeter, 18 gauge jump rings. And we do sell jump rings in various sizes and gauges on our website in bags of 50. So you could get a few different sizes and play with them and see what you come up with. So now we're gonna move on to our final chain and we're gonna be making a single flower link of which this is one. And these are sometimes referred to as rosettes, and we're going to be making several of these and then linking them together in different ways. Uh, this bracelet is uh, using these single flowers uh, linked together with a simple loop. Um, you can, of course, also attach them together with jump rings. Uh, we will be making our single flowers today with a four millimeter, 18 gauge jump ring. Now we're going to start creating our single flowers and we're gonna start with a single open jump ring and we're going to link a closed jump ring onto it. And then we're going to close up this open ring. And once I have these two rings connected, I'm gonna slide them together so they create a common center in between the two rings. I'm going to pick up another open jump ring and I'm going to scoop up those two rings through that common center and close this jump ring. And now I'm going to let this fall down on my work surface and make sure that the rings are arranged properly. If they are not, oops, there's my hair. Sometimes when you drop them down on the work surface, one of these rings will fall 
in a direction that it's not supposed to be in. So I generally will have a copper wire when I'm making these so I can flip the rings around. And they should just overlap nicely and create a nice little three-petaled flower. So now I've made several of my little flower link components and I'm gonna start linking them together. And I'm gonna be linking them together with these basic loop links that I've already made. And if you don't already know how to make these, you can go watch our free class on basic loops by Lisa Niven Kelly. And if you've already watched it, then you're ready to go and make this bracelet. So I'm gonna start linking my chain together and I'm gonna start with my basic looped link here. And I'm gonna open up one of the loops by twisting it open just like you would with your jump rings. Remember, don't pull or push your loops open or closed. You always wanna twist them. And I'm going to pick up one of my little flower links, oh, there it is, with a piece of copper wire. And I'm gonna slide right down the center of all three of those rings so they don't lose their uh, alignment. And I'm going to slide, oops, the whole package rather clumsily onto that wire loop. And then I'm gonna twist my loop closed again. And I have my first link here. And I'm going to take my next loop and open it up and twist it open. And this is a little easier to attach because the flower is already attached to something so the rings can't lose their orientation. Make sure you get through all three rings with that loop before you close it. And here's the start to our bracelet. And of course, you'll just continue on opening up your loops, picking up your flower links with your little copper wire and sliding it onto the loop, closing it up and so on. until you have the length that you desire if you're making a bracelet or a necklace or even, hey, a little pair of earrings. So here's our flower link chain linked together with two jump rings between each flower link as opposed to the basic loops that I attached the other chain together with. And I'm gonna show you now how to link your flowers together with jump rings instead of loops. So I'm gonna start with a single open jump ring and I'm going to scoop up one of my flowers on my copper wire and link through all three of those. Oops, onto my open jump ring. And I'm gonna pick up another flower with my copper wire and slide that on that open jump ring as well before I close it. Like so. Hopefully I did this right so you can see it. Oh, there we go. So there are two flowers linked with a single jump ring. And I'm just gonna add one more. You can stop with the one or you can add two if you like that look. And take another open jump ring and I'm gonna go through the center of one flower. And I'm gonna, oops, <laughs> turn around and find my way through the center of this other flower. And I wanna make sure that my two linking rings are not crossing, even though that is an option too. But for our purposes today, I don't want these rings to cross. I just want them to lay side by side. And now we have two flowers connected by two rings. Now here's a pair of earrings that I've made using several different uh, size of single flower links all linked together. And let's zoom in a little bit closer so I can show you a little better what I've done. So 
Here's a closer look at the earring I've made, and I have used four different size flowers to make this earring. The top and smallest size flower, I used a three millimeter 18 gauge jump ring to make it. The next size down, I did a four millimeter 18 gauge jump ring. The next size down, I used a five millimeter 18 gauge jump ring. And the biggest size down here at the bottom is a 5.5 millimeter 16 gauge jump ring. And I have linked all of these flowers together with a single four millimeter 18 gauge jump ring. And up at the top, I've linked the very top little flower to its uh, ear wire with another single uh, jump ring. And if you want to learn how to make your own ear wires, we do have a free video on making basic ear wires. And down here at the bottom of my earring, I have attached one last four millimeter 18 gauge jump ring. And to that I have attached a little beaded dangle, which is a wire wrap loop on a little spiral head pin. Uh, if you don't know how to make a wire wrap loop, we of course offer uh, wire jewelry fundamentals, which is a paid class, or you can substitute this for a basic loop dangle, uh, which of course you, there's a free class learning how, how to make the basic loops and uh, perfecting the spiral if you wanna learn how to make the little spirally head pin. And that's about it here for us today. I hope you had a good time and learned lots of fun stuff and you're all ready to go out and play with some jump rings. Have fun, bye.